Hello and welcome back to another Siemens S7-1200 and factory I.O. tutorial. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the proportional part of the PID controller and programming it in SCL code to control the water level in a tank. So stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, as mentioned in the part six PID control video, this video continues from where we left off in the water tank level control part two video, where we used the potentiometer on the factory IO control panel to dial in a set point, as opposed to using the real potentiometer with the Arduino in the S7-1200 PLC to Arduino Modbus part five video. We could have continued from either, but I chose to continue from the part two video. So let's have a quick look at how the part two video worked. Let's dial in a set point on the control panel and we see the fill valve opens and water starts filling the tank towards the set point. When the water level reaches the set point, the fill valve goes between fully open to fully closed and we get a small overshoot. When I press the drain button, the discharge valve opens fully and water starts to drain out at maximum speed. As soon as the water level goes below the set point value, the fill valve also opens fully to try and maintain the set point water level in the tank. Using simply fully on and fully off states for both fill and discharge valves is not ideal and therefore we really need to develop a better control method and this is where PID control comes in. And for this video, we will be programming the proportional part of the PID controller, namely P. So before we get into programming, let's take a look at a parallel PID controller line diagram to help understand how to code the proportional part of the PID controller. Now we can see the three parts of the controller, the proportional, the integral and the derivative which are all added together to give us the controller output, UT. So let's remove everything apart from the controller algorithm boxes and arrange them into an equation that we can understand to equal UT. Okay, so we can now see the PID controller algorithm in a straight line, as we would expect to see it as a mathematical equation. However, bear in mind this equation is written in the continuous time domain and we need this equation to be formatted to the discrete time domain as shown here. So we can now write a program for it. Now, we only need this part of the equation for the proportional control where Kp, the gain value, is multiplied by the error value which is calculated at a particular time and we will see how we do that in just a moment. Now I'm sure some of you may say I've seen this PID equation written slightly differently, which is probably true. I've seen many variations on the discrete theme, but remember all we're trying to achieve here is smooth operation for the water tank and to maintain the set point level whenever drainage occurs. So even though there may be variations of this algorithm, I can confidently say this does work reasonably well. Now, what is the error you may ask? Well, let's have a look at an animated diagram to help explain. In this example, we can see that as the water tank fills, the water level gets closer to the desired set point value. And the error is the difference between the set point and the actual water level calculated at regular time intervals. So let's see how we can calculate the error by looking at the line diagram again, but this time 
with the integral and derivative parts removed. Here we can see that the error is the set point minus the feedback process value. Then ut, the output from the controller, is kp multiplied by the error. So let's take a look at how we can start coding this. So we will be doing this in the following steps. Step one, we're going to add some tags. Two, create a cyclic interrupt. Three, create a startup block. Four, add code to the cyclic interrupt in SCL. Five, add code to the startup block. Six, add a watch table so we can monitor values and set the values for KP and the set point directly. And lastly, set a trace up to monitor PV over time so we can monitor the process value visually. So let's carry out these tasks now and I'll explain why we're doing them as we go along. Let's select the tag table and start entering tags. The first tag is KP, the proportional gain as seen in the previous diagrams. This is a real data type and will start at MD120 for the address. Then we enter the error, again being a real data type. In fact, all tags we enter now will be of real data types. The next tag is temp3, and we will use this tag as a temporary storage to record the output when using normx. This will become clearer when we start programming. The next tag is the scaled error which is the output from scale x. Again, this will become clearer when we start programming. And the last one is set point underscore temp, which I will substitute in the existing code so that I can enter a set point via a watch table instead of using the potentiometer on the factory I.O. control panel so that the value is the same every time and we can compare the controller outputs for P, PI and PID accurately. Something I didn't do in the previous video, video six, PID control with Siemens S7-1200 in SCL. Okay, now let's add the cyclic interrupt and startup blocks. So add new block and select cyclic interrupt. Change the language to ladder and the cycle time to 200 milliseconds. Why 200 milliseconds you may ask? Well, we'll come to that a little later in the video. Let's rename the block to cyclic interrupt PID and select OK. Now I should point out that we don't really need to use an interrupt for purely a proportional controller. But when we come to add the integral and derivative parts, it makes life so much easier so that we can accurately time when to read the error value and calculate the controller output. Therefore, I thought I would start the way I mean to go on. Anyway, we will see this shortly. OK, now let's add a startup block and choose SCL for the language and then select OK. Now we're ready to enter code into the cyclic interrupt. But first we need to go to the main OB1 and delete network 3, which is the valve control. So we can place it in the cyclic interrupt and modify the code. So let's delete it now by selecting the function block in main OB1, then edit and delete. Let's delete the name of the network too, so we have completely deleted the network. Great, now let's select the cyclic interrupt and drag the valve control function into the first network. Okay, step four. 
Now we can start editing the code in the valve control function. So first, let's comment out the drain part of the code as we may come back to it. Then delete the first if statement code that controls the fill valve. OK, now the first thing we need to do is calculate the error. And if you can remember, that is the set point minus the process value. So let's enter the code for that now. So error is equal to SP real minus PV real. However, this figure is based on the tank actual values. For example, if the set point is 200 centimeters and the level is currently 50 centimeters, then the error would be 150 centimeters. And if you multiply 150 by the gain, this would be a very large number. This number is then used to open the fill valve, but the fill valve only goes from 0 to 10 volts. Therefore, we need to normalize the error, then scale it between 0 and 10 volts. And the way we do that is by using the normx and scalex conversion operations. So let's enter the code for the conversion operations now and explain it as we go along. So under conversion operation, drag normx into the function. Then change the min and max values to 0, 0.0 and 300.0, which are the min and max values for the tank respectively. Then what we require to normalize is entered in the value field. In this case, we want to normalize the error. We can then use the temp3 tag to write the result in. So for example, if the error was 150, then normx would output a value of 0.5, as 150 is half of 300 and norm x normalizes the content in the value field between 0 and 1. So temp3 is equal to norm x. Great. Just tidying up the code a little. That's fine. Now let's drag scale x down into the function. And this time the min value is 0.0, .0 and the max value is 10.0, which are the limits the factory I.O. valve operates between. Then in the value field, we enter temp3 because scale x will now take the value in temp3, which if we use the same example as before is 0.5 then scale x multiplies it by 10. So that would equal 5, which is half of the tank level. Again, let's tidy it all up. OK, now we need to take the scaled error and multiply it by the proportional gain kp and use the result to open up the fill valve by this amount. Now that may sound feasible, but this value can be greater than 10, causing valve saturation. For example, if the scaled error was 5 and Kp was 20, then the result written to the valve would be 100. So we need a method whereby we can keep the value we write to the fill valve to a maximum of 10 while the scaled error multiplied by the gain is greater than 10. And when the scaled error multiplied by the gain is below 10, when the error is small, we can then write this value to the fill valve. So instead of writing the result directly to the fill valve, I'm going to write the result into fill valve temp. I'll further explain as we go along so let's add one more tag and call it fill valve temp. And now let's continue the code and change fill valve to fill valve temp.
OK, that's modified. So we are going to need to use if and else if statements to check the value in fill valve temp. So let's enter the code for that now. If fill valve temp is greater or equal to 10, then fill valve is equal to 10. Else, if fill valve temp is less than 10, then fill valve equals fill valve temp, which will close the fill valve slowly as the error reduces. Now let's end if followed by a semicolon. OK, that's the valve control function complete. Now let's reset the variables to zero in the startup function, which is step five. So SP is equal to zero and so is SP real. But rather than going through all the variables, I'll just speed up the video and return when all the startup variables have been entered. OK, that's all done. So as soon as the PLC is placed into run mode, then all these variables will be set to zero. Now, I probably didn't need to zero all of these at startup, but at least I know they will be zero when the PLC transitions from stop to run. OK, let's move on to step six, adding a watch table so we can monitor the variables and force some of them to values we require. For example, setting the proportional gain to 1, 10, 20 or 30, etc. So the first variable to monitor is the error. And again, rather than inputting them all, I'll speed up the video, then return when the watch table is complete. OK, that's done. We'll come back to this shortly when we run the program so we can set the gain KP and the set point underscore temp rather than using the potentiometer on the factory IO control panel. Doing it this way, as we mentioned earlier, allows us to set it to the desired value accurately and repeat the process with the same value when testing. OK, moving on to step seven. Now we'll set up the trace. So let's select add new trace and we will select the tag PV real so that we can see what is happening to the water level in the tank. Now we just need to go to the set point function and change where we read the set point value from. So instead of reading it from the potentiometer, we will read it from the set point underscore temp, MD136, which will be modified from the watch table. OK, let's go back to the watch table and enter a value for the set point. I'll select 6.65, which when converted using Normx and Scalex works out to be approximately 200 centimetres. If you have a question about this, please ask in the comments section. We'll also add 20 in for the KP. Now, normally we would start at one for the gain, then work upwards if we were tuning by trial and error. But I've done this before and I really wanted to save some time. Also, for the Ziegler Nichols basic tuning, it says 0.5 times the critical gain is a good starting point for a proportional gain controller, although this would change when having a PI or a PID controller. And we will see that in the next video about PI control. So in our case, as the critical gain is 41, 
this would work out to be approximately 20, which is what I'm using. Right, let's download the hardware configuration to the PLC. OK, that was successful. Now let's download the program to the PLC. Oops, we've disconnected from factory IO. No problem, we'll reconnect in a moment. Great, no errors, no warnings. Now let's reconnect factory IO and put it into run mode. Ah, we needed to run the PLC first to zero the variables. Great, the variables seen in the watch table are zeroed. Now let's put factory IO back into play mode and we are ready to accept the values for KP and the set point by selecting modify in the watch table. But first let's split the screen and monitor the trace too. Let's just move things so that we can see everything. That looks OK. Let's make sure the trace is transferred to the PLC. Uh, actually, I think I forgot to set up the time between sampling on the trace too. So let's do that now. Maybe it would be best if we deleted the trace first, then created another trace to set the properties. So let's do that. Now let's select sampling and in the record every field enter 25 so that every 25 cycles of the PLC we will record and plot a point on the trace graph. That way we can monitor the PV real water level for a longer time. Then back to configuration and enter PV real. Now let's transfer the trace to the PLC again and bring up the watch table again. OK, we are finally ready to go. But before we start, just to let you know, I'm going to check the amount of time it takes the tank water level to reach 200 centimetres. And as the fill valve is basically open fully for most of this time until a couple of seconds at the end, we can use this value to calculate the time constant for the cyclic interrupt. OK, let's select modify in the watch table and see what happens. The SP field goes to 200 as it is an integer of SP real converted from 6.65. The tank starts to fill and the error starts to reduce. We can also see the fill valve temp is quite large so the actual value sent to the fill valve is 10 to avoid the saturation we mentioned earlier. As we get closer to the set point, the fill valve then starts to close relatively smoothly. However, due to the time it takes the fill valve to close, we get a slight overshoot and a small negative error. OK, now we have the time it took to get to the set point of 200 centimetres, which was 28 seconds, we can now look at why we chose 200 milliseconds for the cyclic interrupt. To calculate this, we need the time constant of the system. And this is when it reaches approximately 63% of the desired value. In this case, 200 centimeters. And as this is a fairly linear response, we can multiply 28 seconds by 0.63 and get 17.64 seconds and the time constant should be at least 
10 times faster. In fact, I found it needed to be approximately 100 times faster to get the response I needed. So I selected 200 milliseconds. I tried 500 milliseconds when we were using the integral as well, but the controller didn't react fast enough. And we will see that in the next video. OK, now let's run this again, but this time I will start a trace as soon as the tank starts to fill. OK, the variables are zeroed and we are ready. So let's select modify in the watch table. OK, the tank starts filling. So let's start a trace and see what happens. As expected, the fill valve starts to close once the set point has been reached. OK, let's add a small disturbance and we see we will get a slight undershoot and the controller smoothly brings the level in the tank to a steady state error. Let's increase the disturbance and see what happens again. Also, let's make a note of the disturbance um, of 7.6. Again, we get a slight undershoot and the controller reacts and smoothly brings the level in the tank to a steady state error, albeit a slightly bigger steady state error as it is proportional to the disturbance. Now let's close the discharge valve and see what happens. We see that the level returns approximately to the set point level we had prior to the disturbance. Let's change the proportional gain and see what happens when we introduce a disturbance. This is a slightly smaller disturbance, but because the gain is now 30, the steady state error doesn't change much. In fact, it is probably slightly lower than before. Now you may think if we increase the gain again, we should reduce the steady state error which is true to a point, but watch what happens when I increase it to 41. As you can see, we start to get oscillations where the fill valve keeps opening and closing. This is not a good situation and can reduce the life of the fill valve considerably. OK, let's reduce the set point value to approximately half to 101 by entering 3.37 in the watch table. And selecting modify. And again, let's see what happens. The fill valve closes and the water level drains down until the set point is reached. And then the controller reacts and the fill valve slowly opens to try and maintain the set point level. However, as we can see, because the proportional gain is still 41, we again get oscillations although this time with a little more amplitude, while the period remains unchanged. Let's change the gain back to 20 and see what happens.
we can now see the controller reacts and the oscillations stop and we return to a steady state error. Now for some people having a steady state error is fine and a proportional controller therefore works well for them. However, to eliminate the steady state error, we need to introduce an integral into the algorithm, which we will do in the next video. So I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it the thumbs up. And if you would like to learn more, then please click the subscribe button and the bell so you'll be informed as soon as a new video is uploaded. Please see the links in the description should you wish to get a free 30 day license for Factory IO and also check out my Patreon account. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.